and hygiene. Condition of good health. A general feeling of well-being can be described as a condition of good health. As such, it is only when a person feels unwell that he seeks medical attention. Yet, a person in apparent good health could be harboring certain diseases or disorders like cancer, heart or kidney malfunction, which do not always produce noticeable symptoms at their onset. Therefore, the plea of health must also take into consideration the measures to detect diseases before they acquire serious proportions. What is health? The World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. You must have definitely heard about community health and hygiene. Community health Community health can be defined as all the personal health along with the environmental services for the importance of health of the community. Hygiene Hygiene is defined as the science of health and the prevention of disease. Provision of health education to individuals, groups and organizations, family planning awareness programs, medical care to school students, preventive vaccinations against diseases like tuberculosis, diphtheria, wolf and cough, tetanus, measles, hepatitis, etc. Major aspects of personal hygiene Cleanliness of hands and skin Hands and skin must be cleaned regularly. We are continually handling a variety of things. Furniture Books Coins Currency notes seats and supporting rods and buses, pets and other domestic animals, tools and machinery in workshops and so on. All these objects may carry germs which may be picked up by our fingers and transferred over other parts of the body or into the mouth through food. The practice of washing hands with soap after using toilets is very important. A daily bath regularly keeps the skin clean and free of germs. The body odors given out in perspiration are removed and keeps the sweat pores open. Particular attention must be paid to the cleansing and drying of the various clefts and folds of the skin, for example of arms, legs and toes. Undergarments and handkerchiefs must be washed daily. Personal Cleanliness Hair should be kept clean by frequent washing and regular combing. This keeps it healthy and free of parasites like head lice. Teeth should be cleaned at least twice a day before going to bed at night and after getting up in the morning. Mouth should be washed after every meal. Too much eating of sweets and chocolates spoil the teeth causing caries and gum infections. One must always breathe by the nose and never by the mouth. One should blow the nose into a handkerchief and should hold the handkerchief in front of the mouth and nose 
while sneezing. Eyes must be cleaned and washed with clear water two or three times every day. Trachoma or conjectivitis are two common diseases of the eye caused through dust and through contamination by hands and towels. For preventing eye infections, one must never share towels with others, even in the same family. The Indian custom of applying kajal, that is suit, may sometimes lead to infections of the eyes through the shared applying sticks, so never share such sticks. Ears should be kept clean. The wax inside may be cleaned by soft moist swab. One should never put any sharp pointed object into the ear. It may injure the eardrum. Physical exercise and rest. Some physical exercise is necessary for all age groups, especially children, adolescents and young people. Long gentle walks are enough for the old. Physical exercise should be systematic and regular. It improves blood circulation. All organs of the body, including the brain, that is mind, need rest. In general, the body obtains adequate rest by means of sleep. The amount of sleep required varies with age. The very young infants sleep for most of the day. For adults, Six to seven hours continuous undisturbed sleep is sufficient. Healthy Habits One should develop good healthy habits such as going to bed at night at regular time, taking food at regular hours, etc. In general, going to bed at late hours or immediately after taking dinner are not good habits. Bowels should be cleared every day, preferably in the mornings. Tobacco should be avoided. It is injurious to health and may even lead to cancer. Taking stimulants and sedatives are unnecessary and spoil habits. Drinking alcoholic beverages is definitely harmful to one's own body as well as to society. The living room should be well ventilated for fresh air and sunlight. Fresh air brings oxygen and sunlight kills germs. Prevention of community health Maintaining food standards since the risk of infection from contaminated food is high, all stages of food production, storage and processing should be monitored. A. Milking herd should be tested every year for the presence of tuberculosis bacilli. B. Meat should be inspected to exclude tapeworm infestation. C. Milk should be pasteurized. D. Iodine should be added to salt to combat goiter. E. Common food like bread should be enriched with vitamins. Maintaining clean water supply. Contamination of drinking water with even tiny amounts of feces can cause an epidemic of dysentery, cholera or typhoid. Water must be properly collected, stored, purified and then distributed. Constant tests must be carried out at all stages to ensure that it is not contaminated. 
proper sievers must be provided and linked to sewage treatment plants. This will ensure that the water and sewage do not mix. Proper disposal of sewage and refuse. A. Sewage and chemical waste from factories must be cleaned by chemical treatment before being released into rivers or lakes that are a source of the water supply system. B. Unwanted solid refuse can be disposed on land by incineration. C. Prevention of food adulteration and control of harmful insect breeding sites. Health Problems of Third World Work of World Health Organization the 20th century has witnessed great improvements of health center in the poorer parts of the world. Immunization programs spearheaded by international organizations like the World Health Organization or WHO has eradicated dreaded diseases like smallpox and energetic measures against flies, mosquitoes and ticks have brought diseases like malaria, yellow fever and typhus under control. The purposes of World Health Organization still to be achieved are The tropical climate of many developing countries encourages the development of organisms that cause life-threatening infectious diseases. Providing and maintaining good health care for a rapidly growing population poses extreme economic burden. A population weakened by malnutrition are easy targets for all kind of diseases. Vaccination Vaccination is the practice of artificially introducing germs or germ substances into the body for developing resistance to particular diseases. Scientifically, this practice is called prophylaxis and the material introduced into the body is called the vaccine. The vaccine or germ substances introduced into the body usually by injection. For example, TAB vaccine and sometimes orally, for example, polio drops. When the vaccine is injected in the body, it stimulates the WBCs to produce antibodies against germs for that particular disease. The terms vaccine and vaccination were originally used only for vaccination against smallpox. But now, these are used in a general sense. Methods of Preparing Vaccine A vaccine can be prepared by any one of the following four methods. Number 1. Killed germs as TAB vaccine for typhoid. Sox vaccine for poliomyelitis and the vaccine for rabies, that is dog bite. Number two, living weakened germs. The living germs are treated in such a way that they become very weak and as such, they cannot cause the disease. They can induce antibody formation, such as the vaccine for measles, and the freeze-dried BCG vaccine for tuberculosis. Number 3. Living fully virulent germs as the vaccine for smallpox. In this vaccination, a person is inoculated with cowpox virus, which is very similar to smallpox virus. Smallpox vaccinations are no more given 
because the disease has been eradicated. Number 4. Toxides are vaccines used for diphtheria and tetanus. The toxides are extracts from toxins secreted by bacteria and these poisons are made harmless by the addition of formalin to retain the capacity to produce antibodies that is antitoxins. Attempts are being made to develop a vaccine against AIDS also.